Hey guys, it's Steve Lee. I'm back here again with another Divi CSS tip. This one is uh, is not so quick. I try to typically typically keep the videos between three and four minutes long, and uh, this one today will uh, will certainly be well over uh, ten or maybe even fifteen. We'll see how that goes. But uh, I've been getting a lot of requests in the Divi CSS Share Facebook group about how to use Inspect Element and uh, to, to make live view edits of your uh, web pages you're designing and where to put that CSS, where to put those changes into your style sheets uh, and, and how to have it take permanent effect. So uh, we're gonna jump right into it here. I'm gonna, I'm using Google Chrome, first of all, that's kind of a, a prerequisite for this here. We're gonna be using Google Chrome's inspect element uh, and you can just go to whatever web page uh, you want to, whatever your uh, current project is at this time, and right-click anywhere on the page and press the Inspect button. You can also use your uh, keyboard shortcuts, Control-Shift-I will bring up the same window. Now, your window that comes up might look like mine, and it might look a little bit different. And uh, you can see up here in the top right-hand corner, right next to the Close button, there's these three dots. If you click on those, it'll bring up uh, the, the dock side options. So it'll let you switch it from, uh, you know, right now mine is dock to the right. You can switch it to dock to the left. You can have it dock on the bottom of the screen, or you can have it on a, a whole another screen completely, which is what I typically prefer. But for uh, demonstration purposes and, uh, and screen recording for this video, we're gonna keep it uh, right where it's at here on the right side of the screen. And you can also adjust the uh, the width that the inspect element window uh, is open to. Uh, right now, I've got this to uh, it's set to responsive, which I'll show you here in a second. So your uh, live view web page is going to respond to whatever size uh, window you have on your browser, and you can see the inspect element window gets larger. So I'm going to go ahead and narrow this back up and get a desktop view on our web design page and leave enough room so that we can see both sides of the inspect element window. Um, moving on to a couple other things that uh, that inspect element has, up here in the top left-hand corner, there's, uh, there's two different buttons. One is to select an element on the page, and the other is to toggle the devices that, uh, the the viewport so that would be you know switching to a tablet view or a mobile view uh, we'll get into those in a second for now let's click this button on the left and once you click that you can hover over any element on your web page and it's going to highlight all of the individual uh, pieces now I'm going to click on this button here <clears throat> the learn about us button on this header and uh, just hovering over it it's going to list the classes that are applied to that the CSS classes, uh, which are ETPB button, ETPB more button, and ETPB button one. And you can see at the very beginning, there's the letter A. The A, anytime you see that in CSS, it typically means that uh, that button is a link. If this button didn't link to anything, that A would disappear and all those uh, other classes would just remain the same. So uh, this, this button right here lets your cursor selectively pick and see what, what each element is on the screen. Uh, I don't usually use that. I haven't uh, really had a need to, but uh, just letting you know it's there. The one next to it toggling the uh, devices. Uh, over here at the top of the screen, you can see right now it's set to responsive. I'm gonna change that. We can change it to uh, Pixel 2. This is what this website, uh, this is just a, a, a copy of a, a website that's on a development site. So we don't have to worry about uh, hurting anything here. This is what this website would look like on a Google Pixel 2. You can see what it would look like on an iPhone 10. You can see what it would look like on an iPad or an iPad Pro. Uh, definitely nothing there for the uh, Microsoft Surface tablets. And uh, I, I'm hoping that that's kind of uh, something that's gonna be released here in the future because that's caused me a couple of headaches personally. And uh, that would be a nice feature update. So I've switched back here to responsive mode. And again, uh, if you use the uh, scroll bar here, your uh, screen size will change and respond accordingly using Divi. Uh, some other elements of this. Uh, hey, if, you're, uh, if you don't see this view at all, it's because these tabs here are all different. Right now I'm on the elements tab. That's really the only one that pertains to this video. And um, there are a few others here that you can go ahead and explore on your own. 
one other that we'll probably make a whole nother video out of is the security tab. And uh, what that has to do with is if you are using, uh, if your site is HTTPS and you have an, an SSL certificate, but uh, let me scroll down here on the web page so you can actually see what I'm talking about here. So right now this is HTTPS slash slash NWF development. Uh, it, we have a lock over here on the left-hand side, which is a good thing. That means that uh, your entire uh, web page is secure. If that lock weren't there and it were the letter I instead and it had a circle around it, uh, then you would come over here to the inspect element security tab. You would refresh the page like this, and then it would bring up all the sources that, uh, that this web page is getting its information from. Um, below on the bottom, it would have the secure sources, and at the top, it would have the unsecure ones that would just be listed as HTTP uh, instead of HTTPS. And on the right side, it would say your site serving mixed content, and uh, it, it would tell you literally what you know, which it's usually images, which images are being served from HTTP instead of HTTPS. And uh, real quick, the way to fix that, you would end up uh, going here into your media menu. I'll bring this back up here for you. You would end up going to media and to your library. You would select the picture uh, that that is being served over HTTP. We'll make believe that it's this one here. And down at the bottom, you would click this, edit more details. And when you click edit more details, it lets you change this URL up here. So uh, the, the URL would be HTTP and then the, uh, the address for that picture. You would just have to add an S to the end of it here and update it. And that would fix all of your problems for serving mixed content on your website. So uh, that's getting a bit off topic. I'm going to focus back here on uh, CSS and we're going to go over to the elements tab and get us back out to the to the website. Okay, so I'm back at the website and we're gonna do just a little test here. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna pick this donate button at the top right now. It is pink and it, uh, it hovers purple. Speaking of hover, when, uh, when you are in inspect element, one thing we didn't cover yet is, uh, is the states button, the hover states. And that's right here. It's got a colon and then HOV. If you click that, uh, it brings up a couple of uh, states that you can force, like active, focus, uh, you know, visit it, a link that you visit it before. And the one that you'll use most is hover. So right now, if I wanted to hover over this button and inspect it, it's going to change, but it's not going to stick that way unless you enable hover. And once hover is enabled, it's going to bring up the classes down here that you can actually uh, go about changing. So I'm going to undo all of this and get back out here to where we were in the elements tab. And we're going to inspect element on that button. And it takes a little bit of scrolling sometimes to find what you're looking for. This can kind of look... Uh, a little bit like black magic, not knowing what you're looking at. But one thing that should stand out to you, at least in this case, is the color of this button is uh, that pink color. And you can see that here in the uh, little color swatch. <clears throat> so we're going to click on that color swatch and it's going to bring up its own color palette that in real time, you can actually change the colors of that button on your, your web design page. And uh, I'll show you here in a few minutes. This doesn't just work for your own websites. This works for absolutely any website in the entire world. You can go about seeing what uh, different CSS changes would make for it. So uh, right now we're going to leave that uh, that background color. We're going to make it this blue. And we're going to make the border. Let's make that something extreme contrasting like a green. And maybe we'll go about... Uh, clicking on the border and making the border 20 pixels instead of two. So that's pretty extreme. You can see the uh, the changes that that's enacted on, uh, on that side there. And in order to make these changes uh, stay, where to apply these within Divi, uh, all you have to do is copy and paste. So within this whole element right here, which uh, 
the the elements title is dot donate dash nav and then an a that a again means that it's a link if if this donate button didn't link to anywhere this uh this element over here would just read uh dot donate dash nav it wouldn't have that a there at all and if you click uh if you force a hover state on it you'll see that it'll add that switch for uh for hover right here and again you can you know you can change the hover states at this point too and uh and save those colors if you wanted to but uh we're not going to do that right now we're going to go over to let me undo hover here we're just going to highlight this entire text box here copy it and then we're going to go into our um, divi tab and theme options and all the way at the bottom of theme options is your additional css area and in that css area make a new line and make some new comments which you do by uh, putting a slash and a star and then anything in between is going to come up as uh, comments that won't be part of the code. So I'm just going to type in inspect element test and close that out with another star and a slash. <clears throat> now everything here that we pasted underneath uh, you don't need it all. And in fact, I encourage you to delete the things that you don't need just to keep your code clean. So um, we didn't change the padding on that element at all. We did change the background, the background color. So we're going to keep that one there. The color of the font, we didn't change at all. So we're going to delete that. Uh, or if you want it to, you can change to that, uh, you know, hex code to anything you want it to. But we're going to delete that and clean it up the border we did change the pixels and we changed the color of it and the border radius we didn't change but we can do that here let's uh let's just take that away well let's say we'll make it a four it'll be almost a you know a, a sharp rectangle but you can make any of those changes or uh, or delete them i encourage you to clean up your code as much as you can that'll help your websites uh, run a little smoother and avoid conflict between uh, css elements and ids and uh, classes and things like that. So uh, right now, again, here all we have, I think I've got an extra star in here, which I don't need. Uh, I'm going to save this and we're going to go back out to this website. And this is live. This is published on the internet. And you can see that this, this has changed. I'll close the inspect element window here so you can see that uh, that button has changed to uh, take permanent effect. And you can literally do this anywhere. Um, you can you can see the effects that it would have using inspect element uh, anywhere. So I'm going to go over here to uh, foodnetwork.com, and we're just going to pick out, uh, let's say this header here, quick and easy recipes we're making this week. Right-click on it, bring up inspect element, and it's going to highlight the area that, uh, you know, that you selected. And all you've really got to do is uh, the, the dead giveaway here is the color. I can see color and black. And uh, none of this other stuff matters. It's being overwritten, uh, all that stuff that's striked out. But we can click on this uh, color swatch, and we can see in real time what this website would look like if we change that color to red. And there you go. Now, we can't highlight and copy and paste this into their style sheet because, you know, we don't have the access to do so. But you can see what, what this would look like. You can see what it would look like if... We want it to align their their text to the right. Uh, looks like that uh, that got overwritten on us. Let's try that one more time. Uh, it's not letting me do it to the right. It's getting overwritten, uh, which means that it's probably an ID that's overwriting it. But uh, you can even uncheck these things and see what they would look like uh, without these. Uh, CSS styles applied to them. And I think that's all I've got for today. We're already pushing uh, 15 minutes here, and that's getting a little bit beyond what I like to keep these videos at. I try not to drag them on too long because uh, I do value your time and I value you watching the, the videos and, and us all learning together. So if you've got uh, anything that you'd like to see, any questions or requests, please paste them down in the comments below. 
and feel free to join our, our Facebook group. It's called Divi CSS Share. Uh, the, the whole Divi community kind of gets together and uh, collectively shares little CSS snippets and quick tips. And we place them in our uh, Trello repository for reference later. It's a, it's a really great resource to have for Divi web designers. So that's all I've got, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.